Make or fake an HRI for IBL in Bryce for Bryce. Part 1. Setting up the scene. Bryce can save a render in much higher color resolution than can be displayed on the screen. There is a video why you should consider exporting your renders as HRI on YouTube hosted by David Brennan which elaborates on the aspect of exporting a render as HRI for more possibilities in postwork and also what programs are available for the Mac and the PC and which ones are free. Renders exported as HRI can also be used in Bryce IBL as light probe provided they are in the correct aspect ratio. If such an HRI is used for IBL it will generate nice ambient light but there are no prominent light sources that are considerably brighter than the environment. In this video we will look into the matter of light, how we can create an HRI with bright light sources that can light a scene and goes beyond ambient light. To create an HRI in photography, a couple of exposures with different aperture settings or f-stops or shutter speeds are needed. Each photograph covers a particular brightness range and those overlap from one photograph to the next. This is such a series. The shutter speed sequence was 8 seconds, 2 seconds, half a second, an eighth of a second, a one thirtieth of a second and a one one hundred and twenty fifth of a second at the same F setting. In the bright picture we cannot make out the fluorescent tubes. In the dark one we can only see them and the blue sky shining through the windows. On the other hand we can only make out the lights in the dark picture while we can see walls and doors in the bright one. When combining these photographs to an HRI all information is contained and can be made visible by toe mapping. The Bryce camera has no means to step the aperture or the shutter speed up or down. We could emulate this by using grey filters in form of partly transparent 2D faces. However, this would not help because a white wall cannot become whiter. There is no difference between a white wall and the bright sun. This is different in nature. We have to find means to do what washing agent advertisers already can. Make things whiter than white. A bright light source does not shine into the camera. It does not emit photons that excite a film or saturate a CCD or CMOS chip. It just brightens a surface. It shines on. The Bryce camera only sees bright and dark surfaces. We can make a render, dim the lights and make another render and repeat that a few times. That would be the same as putting a progressively less transparent 2D face in front of the camera. It will dim everything and no light would stand out as brighter. The light source is usually invisible. We must create a surface that shows where the light source is. This may be a white or yellowish sphere that appears as if it were a light bulb or a white cylinder for the fluorescent tube or a flat surface of a matte glass behind of which the light source appears to be. What we must do is to dim the light sources so that the surfaces get less bright. The surfaces that suggest where the light source is must be handled differently. In this way we can make those surfaces to appear brighter in the final HRI than they actually are. Now let's apply what we've just learned. We will work on an indoor scene. The loading dock is a nice challenge, though you can use whatever scene you like. The dock is only three-sided. In the first attempt I put a mirror as fourth wall but light is not reflected by a Bryce mirror. Therefore, the dock was copied, pasted, rotated by 180 degrees and the open walls put together. 
I started work with the mirror version and once all lights were in place I copied and pasted the dock with the lights saving me a lot of time. Next task was to find where the lights are placed. White 2D faces were placed over the light frames and then spotlights added. The 2D faces are the visible light surfaces. The spotlights generate the light. Here is one of the spotlights and this one is a white 2D face. I finally set the spots to square fell off with edge softness at 30 and soft shadows at 20 though for the large HRI I set shadow softness to 0. The 2D faces were set to fully white. It took a bit of time until I got the lighting as I wanted it. Finally I added two radials without shadow and no fall off to simulate the air that scatters the light. Here we have set the light but above the door they have not been set yet. Also here white 2D faces in the light frames spotlights give the light on the floor. And here is another view of the lights with the 2D faces and the light cast by the spotlights. Once happy with the lighting I pondered how I would best make the scene to a panorama. I decided to use the spherical mapper and not the scene converter because it is easier to move the camera with the spherical mapper around to find different positions. If you have not already done so, load the spherical mapper into Bryce. Select the lens group and save it in the objects library. for future use. To use it in your scene perform the following steps. Load the scene. Save the camera position. Move the camera position to 0, 0, 0 and all rotation angles to 0. Get the spherical mapper Set it to 0, Y also 0, 0, no rotation, all on 0, and link it to the perspective camera. Restore the perspective camera. The mapper follows. Then set the document size to whatever size you want, but keep it on a 2 to 1 aspect ratio. In our case it will be 800 by 400. And finally set to 360 degrees panoramic projection and you will get a 360 by 180 degree panorama. Make a test render. You can move the camera around as you wish the spherical mapper will follow. You will always have a spherical panorama. And here you do not have one because the camera position saved earlier has not set it to 360 degree panorama projection. This is important. To prefer the spherical mapper to the scene converter has also a disadvantage. The scene converter can create a light probe of up to 4000 pixels diameter. The spherical mapper is limited to a 1600 pixel diameter probe. If you need a larger probe, use the scene converter. If you need still a larger probe, Bryce cannot handle at the moment, but other programs may. 
render the six cube faces at 4000 pixels per side to get an angular map of 5500 pixels diameter or a spherical panorama of 14000 by 7000 pixels. From an accuracy point of view, the six cube faces give the most accurate panorama and the scene converter the worst, though it is still very good, and the spherical mapper is in between. By the way, I have a calculator on my website, which helps you to find out how large you have to render to get a particular size for an angular map. So we have here a spherical and we can only go to 4000 pixels that gives us the angular map of 1600 pixels diameter. If we would render six cube faces at 4000 pixels per side we would get an angular map of 5500 pixels diameter or a spherical panorama of almost 14000 by 7000 pixels. This concludes the first part and in the second part we will be rendering the exposure series.